I guess I want to bring things back to Trigon because that was, I, <laughs> I, I just finished watching that like, Two, uh, no, th like three weeks ago. I finished watching it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, it's fresh in my mind. <laughs> oh, it was it was insane. Uh, you mentioned uh, that the author had a big hand in um, in the production of mm -hmm. this. Is that normal for like anime adaptations? Uh, is that no, more not like normally. I mean, normally the author is focused on drawing their manga. Yes. Right. So um, people involved, everyone involved, want to pe have that author do keep on doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they might just review um, certain key points of the production. Right. And even in Dragon Stampede, actually um, Naito didn't review every single uh, details. Right. But he reviewed the the core part that really mattered. Right, right, what right. What is that core part? So to drink and party hard, <laughs> to understand each other as much as possible <laughs> at the start of starting, before even before starting anything. Oh, you have to go out so, drinking and eating together. Yeah. Bunch? So basically, talking about what movies do you like, what kind of designs do you like. Oh wow! Basically, oh. the whole entire question was, "Who are you?" Yeah. And yeah. what did you mean to design this? Was yeah. the entire oh. question mm. of having so kind of movie. getting into the psyche of the author, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a that's a pretty cool method, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than like doing a boring business meeting of being like, "All right, so uh, can you check uh, to make sure that uh, Vash's character design and everything and the things he says is cool?" <laughs> then rather than just being like, "Beer." Yeah, that character likes beer as well. You know, when I was drunk as shit and I was writing this character, this is how I felt. Yeah. I think I think that's a great way of doing it because it's like obviously you want to be able to get into the head of the original creator as much as possible to make sure that you don't have to keep like going back and forth with them, right? To be like, is this correct? Is this correct? So, I mean, like how long is that process usually? Like when when the, the ball gets rolling, it's like, okay, we're doing new Trigon. Uh, we, we, you know, we want to make sure it's to the likeness of the, the what the author envisioned. So like, how long is that, I guess, just like incubation process of making sure that everyone's on the same wavelength? Uh, yeah, Trigon actually took five years too. Holy fuck. Five <laughs> years? Okay, I was expecting like a couple of months or, you know, a year I mean, at most. Wait, wait, can, can you so, break I mean, down what those five years So that are? first year was That's definitely the intensive part. Right. Yeah. Um, talking to Naito, um, what, what, how do we understand you? Drinking. Yeah, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> one one year of drinks before we're happy to proceed. To I mean, it's not all drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just hanging out and chatting. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, from there it started. Um, then how do we create this world? So Naito's world is in the manga frame itself. We can't ask him to just draw the entire what's not in the manga. Yeah, mm, so okay. because he's working on Kikai Sensen, I mean that's precious to him as well. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So then how can we make something precious as equivalent? Or try to at least match to the preciousness of what he created. Mm. Okay. So we hired a uh, uh, actual sci-fi author to write down the entire history for 150 years of history from this, this before the sh crash to right. after the crash. Oh okay. wow! So you oh. you just have the entire timeline of the world just laid out. Oh yes. wow! Okay, Damn. and like from there you kind of like built up from that like yeah. one timeline. Oh, so okay. from there um, we decided. What to keep, what not to keep. What can we describe? What can we not describe? Okay. Yeah. How how much of this timeline was not in the show? I'm I'm <laughs> curious in terms of like percentage. Percentage is difficult, but I mean, was it like uh, the majority? Or? There's a lot of hundreds of pages before the crash, so a lot of it that's not included there. I don't know what the crash that. is. Should I know what that is? So in, in 98 Trigon, they it's crashed. been so long since I watched okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is. Oh, okay. How do you? How do we explain without spoiling? Okay. Yeah. Wait, I spoil. Don't yeah. Spoil okay. Me. Okay. Not everybody's seen the original Trigon. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was in the original Trigon anime. Yeah, I, I oh. forgot. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> so in the original Trigon, even though it's kind of like a Western, yeah. right? It's obviously not set on Earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And so humanity has found a way there. Yeah. Uh, and. Basically, it turns into kind of like a sci-fi aspect. Yeah, I remember that aspect. part. Mm. I remember uh, aliens, and I don't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel it's not until like the last yeah, like four was, or five I, episodes. I, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, okay, but cool cross go. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bash goes Super Saiyan. Because really. yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like a lot of the sci-fi aspects in the original Trigon, that was almost not like, one of the core aspects of the show. No. It, it definitely came in like halfway through, but I feel like Trigon Stampede, the first big difference I noticed was 
you're like from episode one, this is a sci-fi show. Yeah, way more we are sci-fi. leaning into that right yeah. now. Um, was it was it part of the creative decision to kind of like focus more on the sci-fi aspects and focus on like the world building? Yeah, the director, um, one of his specialties is this. his question in designing everything is where are you from? Where are you going? Right. So in Trigon, they had to know where these characters are coming from right. and what their objective is and where they're going to the end. Oh, okay. Mm. So so going going back to the timeline, how much how much didn't or how much didn't you put in the show? Or how much did you actually show out of everything that you all this work that you did before in terms of building this world? Well, my partner says that we could make another, like five more shows. Oh my god. <laughs> Based oh my god. Of I feel I feel like you could release that sci-fi book as like a yeah. like an episode 0, yeah. you know, like a light novel or some kind. Yeah. I feel this cuz like you could definitely feel you know, there were definitely in, in the way that the story was structured when you get to know more about the crash and the, the history behind the crash, there's definitely a lot of vital information there that is important to the present day of whatever episode you're watching, which, you know, obviously is great because it gets him way more invested into the storytelling. But there were also a lot of details where I'm like, okay, but I kind of want to know a little bit more about this because yeah. that would just get me even further invested. But obviously there's a 12 episode time limit, right? So you, yeah. you can't fucking go all out with it. Like, you know, the Dune movie did the exact same thing where it's yeah. like, I'll give you, we'll sprinkle in some like hints of backstory. Why is it always 12 or 24 episodes? <laughs> That's how the TV structured oh, broadcast oh, in Japan. damn it. Yeah. Okay, I was yes. like, damn, there's gonna be a cool reason. <laughs> <laughs> Just TV contracts, okay. <laughs> All right. But some of them are go direct to streaming and don't even air on TV in mm. Japan. So, I, but they still keep that twenty four no, or twelve. Netflix doesn't. You think about Edge Runners, that was ten episodes. I guess so. Yeah, but then yeah. even on Netflix, a lot of the anime do still go at twelve. Or- and then you know, if you go to like, if you go to like OVA stuff like that, like mm. Fully Cooly yeah. was only six episodes. Castlevania huh. started off as four episodes, but oh, then yeah, eight yeah. episodes. So I mean, I feel like it's a difference between like, a, let's say, a Netflix original produced anime mm. and something that Netflix just bought out. Mm. Huh. Which that's I, like a big chunk though to decide in one go. Like, what if you have like sixteen episodes worth? You're like, ah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you just trim it down, or do you try and find stuff to? Fluff I mean, that's out? the entire dilemma. Every single and oh, right. yeah. yeah. director field. It's either too quick or t- or way too slow. Yeah. So if yeah. it's based on manga, it could be t- ideally tw- sixteen episodes, but right. they could only use twelve. So what do they do? Yeah. Um, okay. So like. Oh shit, I have so many questions, but I guess go, go into the manga <laughs> thing. So you have a manga, you have to adapt, like, like let's say Trigon or Beastars. How do you position it so that the season ends on like a banger, you know? On, on like what feels like a season ending? Yeah. And what if, what if there's no, what if, what if there's no like natural breaking point? What's, mm. what's the creative process around condensing everything into 12 episodes? So um, in case of Beastars and even Trigon, um, what we do is the same. We actually take everything apart first. Right. And we look at what what is the tempo of the film? What is the tempo of the story? And right. what's the te- um, how can we keep everything, but still not um, some part ha- we had to cut it all out. Right, mm-hmm. right. So basically everything is kind of like, you, everything has to be planned around like, kind of like a self-contained story arc is what, what, I'm, what I'm getting. Mm. All right, so you know, going back to Trigon, you have your you have your timeline. What what comes next after the timeline? So timeline, uh, <laughs> as we're developing timeline, we're developing con- concept arts. So then it comes into what ideas can emerge from the storyline visually. Right. Okay. So I mean, we hired. Uh, we were working with Tajima Koji. He's the guy behind like who d- designed the new Venom in the, oh. the live action Venom. Okay. Stuff. Okay. And so he's excellent. He he's amazing. So right. each day he draws dozens of images, right. and he he drew four hundred images for try to send <laughs> Just damn. just concept art. Yeah, concept art. Oh my God. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of bookstores in Japan where they just sell straight up books filled with these concept arts, right? And it's li- literally like big enough for a lot of series to just fill an entire book. Right. And you know, some of these images you never see in the show. Mm-hmm. It's just like to get a vibe or a feel of this is what the world and story and characters is gonna be like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so 400, um, we used it some for promotion, but most of the design is entirely different because right, the idea right. is what really matters there. Mm. So at this point, how many years into production are you in? So this is still the first year. It's still the first year. first year. Has the script been written yet? No. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, 
So you have, okay, so you have your concept art and then I guess you kind of like narrow down what kind of vibe. Yeah, so we made the, found, the entire foundation in the year. Right. Then from the foundation, we started writing the script. Okay, okay, okay. At this point, was character design like a thing or? No, did no. Design oh is, has a purpose. Right, right, like, right. Uh, industry industrial design right. always has a purpose. Um, was the concept for Trident? Okay, so okay. it's not that I like the style of design. I don't like this design. It's why are you designed that way? Was okay. the, like doesn't really, work in the world that it's okay. set in, right? So yeah. can, it's like, can you break down what concept art kind of like is? What what is it that is being drawn, and what kind of like thing is being built on? So for example, um, like create um. Hmm. It's really hard to describe without the concept art in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> like a feeling. Yeah, like a yeah. feeling. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, what inspire, I mean, it, it's something definitely, what it cre that concept art, does it, how much can we inspire the, the script writer, the director, the designer? Right. To, oh, to give more of a picture of the world. Yes. I suppose to kind of flesh it out. Cause I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I'm fucking stupid. If I don't see a picture of something, I'm like, I can't imagine that. Like to me, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm a visual learner. Yeah, I, I was that, like I'm just straight up dumb. I'm a visual learner. I, like if I don't get a picture, I'm like, what am I, what am I reading here? So it sounds like the concept art is like, for more of the better terms, is, is like a vibe check, right? To just be like, here is the 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 general overarching uh feel and vibe of the world and then from there you kind of start honing into the details yes. as yeah. you go into like character design and all that kind of stuff is that concept art yeah that's concept art. Oh, cool. okay, okay so in the original trigun anime um is designed as western yeah yeah so there's it is western inspired so there's what made things made out of wood yeah yeah mm. but if we're taking this a sci-fi approach um this is a desert planet there's no plants there's right. no kind of plants so if civilization human civilization brought in a crashed ship there's no wood used on the ship yeah sure. so where does oh. this word come would come so it doesn't come from anywhere oh. <coughs> i've thought about that so yeah, in this new <laughs> dragon stampede we don't have any wood architecture unless it's a uh, this one origin called plants um right. it's not it's not um same oh. as plants of the trees but right I yeah. never, never thought about that in yeah. Checkmate oh. Trigon. Oh my god! Because <laughs> when you when you see like the towns and cities in Trigon, it just I can't explain it. It just feels like yeah, that that could be real. Uh, it's sometimes you just watch a show where the world just makes sense on a subconscious level. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? Where sometimes you watch a show um, or play a game, and you're like, I don't know why this world operates this way. Yeah, and you can't really. You can't really say why it doesn't make sense. Just something just feels wrong. But one thing I got from watching Trigon Stampede is that it feels like a world that just exists. Yes. Yeah, like you don't stop to question it. You don't stop to question yeah. it, you know? And you, it's not like every detail is spelt out, but it feels like you, your brain just accepts it on a subconscious level. And I, I guess I'm like kind of figuring out why that is now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. we figured out, we thought about how's the population ratio of this crash ship? Where did they focus on? So the Asian population focuses on here. Ah. Um, other population focuses here. How did these people communicate? So the trade route should be focused like that. <laughs> So those are all things we thought how about. Deeply, how deeply did you go into the, like the, like these little macro details in the world? Yeah, yeah, the macroeconomics. I mean, the book is like this big. So. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you're basically like recreating a civilization yes. from scratch. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. wild. I, th I thought that probably game creators are probably doing like this. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you play Destiny and you're like, go online to download the 19 page PDF to find out why this rock is blue. You're like, <laughs> you're like what the fuck? I don't want to do that. Oh, it's like some Lord of the Rings shit. Why you guys explain yeah. stuff to me? What the hell? I <laughs> so this was all done within like the first year. Uh, I mean, that took, I mean, we're starting to go into the later years too as well. Okay. Mm. okay. So everything is going parallels. Right, so everything is going in parallel. So at which point did like the script start being written and like, let's say the character designs start being like finalized? Yeah, after the first year, we started going to designs and the script writing. Right. But to finalize that, we, we took three years, so. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> Is it is in your experience? Is this like normal for an anime production, or no, is this no, just no. okay? I mean, Orange itself um, is un, uh, un, uncommon for a anime production. We take three years, right? Where industry standards like two. I yeah, think. yeah, that, yeah. That's what I thought. As well. Isn't that crazy to think? Like you say, three years very casually, but that's the time that Trash Taste has been around. 
<laughs> Isn't that yeah. wild to yeah. think about? You guys, you guys could have a trusty Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> if we started working on episode yeah. one, it would be done right about now. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you had so much concept art done because I kind of just assumed that because there was like pre-existing material like manga, like, mm. like a manga there, that there wouldn't be, that wouldn't need to be this much work to be done in pre-production. I mean, there's also a previous anime as and well, And a previous right? anime yeah. as well. But I guess, I guess this is like the work that you don't really think about or you don't really see.